It's so nice to see all your familiar faces here. And uh, thank you. I want to keep with the uh, uh, theme here and begin with thank yous. Thank you, Pastor Gary, for inviting us and giving us an opportunity to share. And thank you, Brian, for uh, reminding me of how much all the deacons do here. I was once a moderator of deacons before being the pastor, and we thought we did a lot, but it didn't even hold the candles what you folks do here. So thank you all. Um, we're here in keeping with the theme to also say thank you to everybody for all the support that you've given little children of the world. Um, if you remember a few years ago, uh, you saw our president of little children of the world, Glenna Waller, on the screen here when we did a Zoom call, and uh, also uh, Mary Lou Patrimonio Abbott. And uh, now you can see him in person. But uh, Glenna has been involved in the ministry since the beginning, 35 years, and she's retiring. And she wanted to make sure that she came by to the Elkton Church to say thank you before she retires at the end of this year. And uh, so she'll share briefly with you uh, her thanks and also a little bit about the ministry. And Mary Lou will uh, give a testimony because uh, she was part of that ministry and is part of that ministry. So I'll turn it over to Glenna. Good morning. Thank you so much for the opportunity to be here today. We thank the Pattersons and your pastor for making it possible. It's a joy to be here to tell you a little bit about the ministry that's so near and dear to my heart, Little Children of the World. It was started 35 years ago by my aunt and uncle, who were your Presbyterian missionaries for 30 plus years, and by my parents and also an uncle. They were people just like you who loved the Lord with all their heart, and they just wanted to make a difference in this world. So at retirement age, God made their dreams a reality. And it, the Lord takes the little we have, and he makes so much out of it. Little Children of the World was started with eight little boys who were found under cardboard boxes with nobody to love them and nobody to care for them. With God's help and people like you, it's grown to over 850 sponsored children, and we ministered over 6,000 people in and around Dumaguete City, Philippines. Uh, LCP, Little Children of the Philippines, has a health clinic, two soup kitchens, five residential dorms, seven preschools, a program for college students, livelihood, children with disabilities, peace and faith, and sponsorship. We strive to follow the Great Commission as we minister to these people who have so very little. We try to feed and clothe them to take care of their health needs and give them an opportunity for an education. But the most important thing we do is to teach them about Jesus. Sunday's my favorite time at LCP. We have an average attendance of over 2,000 people who come from the mountains and down by the sea. It's 85 degrees and above, and we worship in an open-air chapel, singing and praising the Lord with all their hearts. It's an amazing sight, and you can truly feel God's presence there. Sunday school is under the mango trees, <clears throat> with 50 here and 75 there and 100 there, all over the campus. They have Bible study every week in all 14 communities, and the youth come in on Saturday for Bible study. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for the gifts that you've sent to the ministry, for the Peace and Faith program, and also for urgent needs. You are so important. The Peace and Faith program is one we struggle to have enough funds for. Your gifts are the hands and feet of Jesus in the Philippines. We pray that your church will partner with us and help us to continue to share Jesus in the Philippines. Christmas is a special time, and I want to thank you especially for the gloves that you got for the fathers last year. It meant so much to them. They have so little, and it helped them in their work, and it also made them know somebody from over here cared about them. Thank you so much. Jesus has called us to continue the mission that he has given us. We cannot do this without people like you. My dream is that LCW will spread, that it will spread to other islands in the Philippines and other parts of the world, and that we will be able to share Jesus with more people. Please pray with us as we move forward according to God's will. 
That is what the ministry is all about, doing what Jesus wants us to do. Thank you for being a part of helping us change the world one child at a time. Remember, tomorrow the world may be different because you were important in the life of a child today. May God bless you and your church as you faithfully serve him. Mary Lou is now going to give her testimony. Good morning. Good morning. So once again, thank you so much for having us today. It is our great honor and a privilege to be here in your, ch in your church. And to thank you personally for everything that you've done for Little Children of the World, Little Children of the Philippines. And it is my prayer that God will use my story to, um, to remind you that God uses ordinary people like you and me to be his hands and feet and most especially to teach you know, other people about Jesus and to accept them uh, and to accept him as his personal savior. I'm Mary Lou Patrimonio Abbott and I grew up in the Philippines and I am a sister of a sponsor child. I was never the sponsor child of the family, but the blessings of my sister sponsorship overflow in the whole family. And the first criteria to be part of the prog program is that you have to be poor. And yes, our family was poor. Um, my parents were hard working people. You know, they, sh they wake up so early in the morning, try to make our livelihood. And we make a dollar or two a day making fried donuts. They are hard working people, but because of lack of education and for my daddy to be very sickly, you know, he, they never make enough money for the family. And as I mentioned, um, I grew up in the Philippines. I grew up in a traditional Filipino home. Roof is made from coconut leaves, wall and floors from bamboo, and our roof have so many holes. And there were many nights that we woke up soaking wet, you know. And I know that my parents' heart wanted to fix our roof, but they just could not afford it because they just don't have the money. And um, and also, um, we didn't own a bed when I was growing up. We slept on the floor on the mat. And then, but the mat that my family owned was worn out. It was have holes in the middle, split into halves. So when I first came to the U.S., I saw this mat actually hanging at our office in LCW, and then it made me cry because it was so beautiful, it was so crisp, and I know that my family would have loved to have that, you know, mat, but we just never, you know, could not afford it. And especially um, going to college and have an education, that was just a dream for us. We never thought that we can have that education. And I was once asked about what was the hardest part growing up in a poor family. And my reply was for my family to choose either to buy one medication, one pill for my dad, or to buy food for the family. So as a child, that just really, you know, um, I just remember that to be just the hardest experience because my family was just poor and we can just not make the decision to have food today, rather to have to either to choose one or the other. But God is so, so good. His faithfulness, his mercy, and his grace came to our family through Little Children of the World, Little Children of the Philippines. My sister became a sponsor child. And um, her sponsorship has truly blessed the whole family. We, um, she started receiving um, me, um, uniform, and I was able to enjoy the hand-me-down uniforms, the school supplies. And most especially, every month we knew that there's help and hope because someone in the U.S. cared about our family, that they're willing to support us. And most especially being at LCP, I've learned about Jesus and I accepted him as my personal savior. So LCP believed that you can clothe them, you can educate them, but if you fail to teach them about Jesus, everything's in vain. vain. So thank God that through LCP, you know, I was able to, to we were able to give them help and hope, but most especially, we'll learn about Jesus. And thank God my sister has graduated um, with her bachelor's degree in management, and now she owns her own business and she's giving back to, the, to, to our community, actually to LCP also. And for me, after 20 years, 
God has called me to work for the ministry that changed our lives. So it is my, um, I am so humble that God has allowed me to do this. And then again, before I was born, I know that this is part of God's plan for my life to share with you about my story so that you will also know about the kids in the Philippines. And for me and my husband now, we sponsor a child since elementary and now she's in college. And it is a, it is an wonderful experience that God has allowed me to give back to the ministry and also to change the life of a child that was, you know, that we were once like them that in great uh, need help. So uh, at LCP, I had so many precious memories and I'm just going to share with you one Christmas time. And one Christmas time in, in front of us was this giant pile of gifts wrapped in um, Grabbing newspaper as a child, you know, I was just so excited to receive the present, and I didn't know what was it. So it was time for me to receive mine. I opened it, and it was a doll. It was my first beautiful doll. So, in behalf of all the people at LCP, I just want to say thank you so much for sending, you know, present to the kids in the Philippines and for the fathers, so that they will have Christmas present. So once again, um, thank you for allowing us to be here. And we have case studies available in the fellowship hall. 30, um, it's $35 a month. And, you know, for your child, the $35 is really, you know, a big blessing to them. So once again, thank you for allowing us to be here. And thank you so much for giving help and hope, help and hope for the children in the Philippines. So thank you.